It's good to be back with you again, talking on prayer. Last time we talked about simple prayer, just learning to pray by praying. We talked about don't be discouraged about your lack of prayer. We all wish we pray, prayed more. Uh, and don't think you have to pray these um, just elaborate prayers. Um, don't be um, discouraged by our request. We talked about children and grandchildren come with silly requests and selfish requests, and we pray with wrong motives. Uh, but just remember, we're like um, a child going to uh, their father, our father, Abba Father. And as we think about the simple prayer, I want to move to a, another um, dimension, a, a deeper dimension, uh, unceasing prayer, where it says, the scripture says, pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. It says in, in uh, Romans 12, 12, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. In Ephesians 6, when it talks about putting on the whole armor of God, it says praying at all times in the spirit uh, with all, you know, uh, with supplication and thanksgiving. Um, uh, Ephesians 4 talks about continue steadfastly in prayer. Philippians 4, 6 says that uh, we're to be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, let our requests be made known to God. Um, uh, so these things, it says the same thing in Hebrews 13. Actually, it's Colossians 4, 2, not Ephesians 4, 2. I'd written that down wrong. And so this idea of continually being in communion with God. I have a friend who years ago said this, and I'll never forget it. He said, when I die and meet Jesus face to face, I hope he will say, as I was saying, in other words, the conversation that he was having on earth just got transferred to heaven where that conversation was face to face, where it was in faith while he was here on earth. So the question comes, is this type of communion possible? Uh, we can't think of God all the time, but ask yourself, do you long for that communion with God? Do you wanna hear God's voice? Do you want to feel like you are in the presence of God, that you're being sensitive to his spirit, not grieving his spirit, his spirit but listening to him, listening to what God says in his word to us, trying to apply the scriptures and be obedient that all God has asked us to do. That would be the first thing is to truly love and want to be in that kind of relationship with God that we just are talking with God all the time. You know, the probably the most famous book on this is by Brother Law Brother Lawrence, that is the practice of the presence of God. Um, but you have others like Thomas Kelly and Ian e. Bounds and Frank Lubbock and, and Richard Rohr that talk about these subjects. And uh, so how do, we, how do we get there? How do we uh, get to this uh, unceasing prayer? And let me just say, this is not a one, two, three approach. This is not a step-by-step -step approach. This is something that's a learned practice. Uh, Brother Brian himself said it took him 10 years to really sense that he was in the presence of God um, every moment of the day. And as he went about uh, in the kitchen, washing pots and pans, whatever he did. Uh, but we want to create this communion so uh, God, we will sense God calling up scripture where we're in a situation with temptation or trying to give people advice or um, we're in a very stressful situation. There's this peace that overwhelms us. That peace is passes, the peace that passes all understanding as it says in Philippians 4. So here's the question again. Do you desire to know God that deeply? Do you desire to have that conversation with him that 
when you meet him face to face, you can say, Lord, as we were, let's pick up the conversation that we were having. Well, let me give you some suggestions on how we can begin to have this. One is called breath prayers, or some people call it popcorn prayers. Simple phrases, things that uh, we can just talk to God about. Lord, help me to know your will in this. Jesus, I need your help. Lord, give me wisdom in this situation. Uh, Father, I love you. Help me love others. Uh, whatever the situation, um, uh, when you're in traffic, when you're, you know, when, when someone offends you, whatever, then we can just breathe those prayers to God. Just as we hear the popcorn pop, we can just feel that communion uh, with him that we can, we can do that. Probably the most famous uh, short prayers are uh, the publican that said, God be merciful to me, a sinner. That was a powerful prayer, short prayer. How about the one, the thief on the cross? Jesus, remember me uh, when you get uh, to paradise, when you come into your paradise. So it, it's not complicated, but it's something we learn to do like breathing, that we just utter to God whatever's on our heart. Um, and it, it just be, becomes a part of us. Um, part of our lifestyle. Uh, I didn't grow up in my family saying, I love you each time to our family member and that kind of thing. But my wife, Ann, has taught that uh, to me and to our family. And so it would be, um, it would just not be right for us to not uh, end our phone conversation with, I love you, or when I leave uh, to go to work, or she leaves to go on an errand. It's just a natural part of when we uh, talk to our kids when we're, and, and I've learned to say it with, with my fellow uh, brothers in Christ, that I love you. Um, I, I highly regard you. I uh, do this. And I, but I've learned that through practice. I've learned that through doing. And that's what we're talking about here in this unceasing prayer. We're just practicing doing that. Uh, I did not grow up playing golf or tennis. I, I played, when I played golf with my father and my brother, it was on vacation. We'd play, play it all on vacation. Very rarely would we go uh, and play at other times during the year. And I didn't pick up a tennis racket till I was a junior in college. And I did that because I got one for Christmas. And, but, but I began to learn and to practice and, and I've gotten better at it. But what I've noticed is, particularly as I'm playing more golf these days, I play with some guys that grew up playing golf who were instructed in how to hold a club and uh, so many different things. And I notice how easy it is, and it's not easy, but I notice they know what to change or how to move uh, into the correct stroke or whatever, because it's a part of what they learned. And that's what we're looking at in terms of, you know, breath prayers. The other way to do this is to more formally, is to try to uh, purposely have uh, a joyful awareness of God's presence in our life. Um, you know, plan on the first thing in the morning and the last thing in the evening, um, just consciously saying, God, I love you. Thank you for this day. I have some devotionals that I read. Uh, you got Spurgeon's Morning and Evening. There's a devotional by John Bailey's, uh, a Scottish theologian that's kind of a, <coughs> excuse me, a morning and an evening prayer that, that helped me. That's, that's one way to do it. Have, have, if you would, prompts that will help you. Maybe sticky notes uh, somewhere, or maybe you have it in your car when, when the traffic's bad to, to pray or to meditate on scripture. Maybe for teachers, teachers or students, it's when the alarm bell goes off or the, the changing class bells. Maybe you put uh, some alarms on your phone to pray at 10 and 2. Um, you know, what ways can you uh, do this? What, today, maybe when you're putting on uh, your mask or, or you, your hand sanitizer, it's a reminder to pray. Um, 
that, that, that will help us have this unceasing prayer. You know, over these last six months, seven months now, basically, I've experienced so many different uh, things. I've experienced weariness. I've experienced discouragement. I've experienced gratefulness, um, just uh, emotions that go up and down. I was telling Ann just the other day, I just, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm much more emotional. I'm much more impatient. And, uh, and I think it has to do with being coped up and our schedule is not ever the same. And so I need this for myself. I need this breath prayers, these popcorn prayers, these things to say, Lord, help me. Lord, give me patience. Lord, help me love others. Lord, help me be a catalyst for racial reconciliation, for, uh, for closing the divide in our political situation, whatever it might be. Simple breath concentrated effort prayer. It's going to take a long, long time. It's going to take practice, practice, practice. So how about it? Let's go to practice and let's see what God does.